Wednesday night Bible study and hope you're having a great week in the Lord. I know it's been a busy week and uh, it's been uh, just a tiring week uh, for a lot of people. We've had a lot of people sick and we've been praying for those and it seems like we've had a tremendous outbreak of uh, COVID the past a week or so. We're praying for all of those and we appreciate you taking time and your schedule uh, to join us uh, online uh, tonight. And uh, it's hard to believe it's uh, uh, December the 9th, 2020, and uh, we're right uh, uh, in December here approaching uh, the Christmas holiday. And I challenge you once again to uh, uh, just acknowledge what this season is all about and even more so uh, the times we're living in. Uh, we definitely want to be uh, much in prayer for those who have lost loved ones, but it's the time to celebrate the birth of Jesus, and I'm uh, thankful for his birth, and uh, we have been uh, for some time uh, studying the book of Revelation, and I would like to continue tonight uh, with that study. Uh, if we could possibly, uh, if you join with us tonight, the book of Revelation chapter 13, and uh, I would just like to uh, teach a little bit on uh, Revelation chapter 13. And it's amazing as we've been studying this, uh, where we are at in our world today. And uh, I want to uh, try to guide you along here with where we kind of exist as far as what's going on uh, in our world in which we live in uh, today as far as the end time. And so without further ado, we want to turn to the book of Revelation chapter 13. If you'll turn there with me in the word of the Lord, I want to go right into it uh, tonight. Once again, we appreciate you tuning in, uh, each and every one of you. Uh, those that are listening for the first time, we welcome you. Uh, we uh, welcome our church congregation and our guests and friends and family tuned in uh, wherever you may be. May the Lord bless you. We're praying for you, praying for all of all our, our people that are shut in and unable to go to the house of God. But we thank you and love you and appreciate you uh, so very much. The book of Revelation chapter 13, beginning with verse 1, And I stood upon uh, the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seed and great authority. And I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is likened to the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Verse 6 says, And he opened his mouth and blaspheming against God uh, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given uh, him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon uh, the earth uh, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Verse 10, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men." and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell upon the earth that they should make an image 
to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. In verse 15, And he had power to give unto him the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Verse 18, Here is wisdom, let him that understandeth, understanding count the number of beasts, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. I like to uh, preach uh, on this uh, Wednesday night. Uh, Bible study, just simply uh, the thought, just two beasts, the two beasts. I want to preach uh, on the two beasts. And if you'll just say, God bless the word. Amen. God bless the word. Amen. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you. God bless you uh, this afternoon. Verse 13 and 1 may mention then, I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea. The Bible begins reading in verse 1, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Uh, in the book of Revelation, as we have been studying, uh, the beast prophetically represents kings and kingdoms. All of these kings and kingdoms that are represented in our world, uh, it is a world-structured of power. Everybody is out for power. Everybody is out to dominate and to control uh, the world. And so these beasts prophetically are referring to all the kings and kingdoms. Great leaders are referred to as kings according to the Bible. And the and John interprets the seven heads as we've already mentioned in uh, Revelation chapter 17 uh, verses 9 through uh, 10. Uh, we, we will get to chapter 17, but we, uh, as I mentioned on several occasions in the study of uh, the book of Revelation, that sometimes you got to go backwards in order to go forward. And so we we went forward and backwards a few times to try to understand this. But John interprets the seven heads uh, as uh, 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 he does in chapter 17. The mountains uh, also, as far as referring to symbolic of kingdoms, when it first these mountains... It refers to certain kingdoms, and of course the kingdoms representing certain nations of the world and those leaders. The beast out of the sea, we read in your hearing, represents uh, the head of the revived Roman Empire. In the very beginning throughout the Bible, it was the Romans. It was uh, the Roman Empire who was in all power, and it was there uh, that they persecuted uh, the Jews, and it was there that the Romans, we know, crucified the Lord, and we know uh, throughout history about how they dominated and their power, their armies, their chariots. Uh, they suppress uh, uh, the uh, uh, nation of Israel uh, on many occasions, and it was a constant battle. Uh, that was a kingdom that was in power. And so the book of Revelation, as we read and study here, the Bible is referring uh, to the Roman Empire, which was completely destroyed and done away with. But the Bible speaks through prophecy that there would be a rise, uh, there would be a revive uh, of uh, the Roman Empire. And the revision of this new Roman Empire would come into play. And so the old Roman Empire became the modern Europe, in the tribulation, uh, ten nations from Europe will form the revived Roman Empire. And so the city of Rome will be the capital of this empire. As the world uh, begins to structure and all the superpowers of the world come together, and you see the rise of these beasts and nations and kings and kingdoms, and there will be the birth of the world, one world government, uh, you will find that uh, this will come into play as there will be uh, a, a modernized, uh, in our day, uh, there would be a 
reviving of the Roman Empire will come back into power again and the city of Rome will be that capital of the one world government of uh, the this uh, particular empire. And later in the tribulation, the world ruler will move his capital to Babylon. And we know the story about the, ba the Babylonians and how that they were the enemies of God as well. So what you're seeing is history in the past, the Roman Empire, Rome, and you're seeing Babylon, uh, the Babylonians. Uh, you, you find that uh, it's, it's a saying that history always goes full circle again. We find that it will come full circle again uh, in the end of uh, the, uh, the world. And so it talks about all these different beasts. And uh, one of the beasts that talked about the book of Daniel, the fourth beast of Daniel, is also the ten horns. And so the fourth beast is this Roman Empire. Uh, it's different beasts, different nations, different kings, different kingdoms. And so the fourth beast is the Roman Empire. And it's known as the little horn. Uh, is, is what it's referring to as the world ruler during this particular time. Now we know that uh, we talked about last week about uh, the seven spirits, the seven churches, and we talked about uh, the candlesticks and talked about the horns and, and so forth. And here we are with the ten horns, which represents each horn, uh, which represents a certain king. Uh, a horn makes a... Uh, noise uh, it exalts it uh, the sound uh, it, 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 it what it does it, it creates a noise which is an entrance a salute uh, some kind of reference to some power or king usually in warfare when they would attack another king and the king would fight another they would begin to play that horn and it would exalt it would just uh, honor it would uh, uh, give signal to uh, the arrival of a king just as the president has, like a, uh, a musical interlude, it has, uh, you know, they play that, 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 that little entrance as the, the president walks into a room. It was a salute and an honor and a glory. These ten horns represent the ten kings that are mentioned in the Bible. And so now the beast which I saw was like, and he begins to give a simile, a comparison of some things. He said now... John the Revelator begins to speak of the beast, which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. These are three animals that are used uh, several times in the Bible, especially the book of Revelation. And uh, the three animals of this verse refer to the empires once again, the leopard being in reference uh, to Greece. Uh, we find that the bear, uh, uh, Medo persia which is representing uh, the bear there, uh, made of Persia, Persia. And then we find the lion, which is the ba Babylon. So you have three different animals, the leopard, the bear, the lion, leopard, Greece, the bear, which is made of Persia, and then the lion, which is Bab Babylon. And these beasts, the Bible speaks in chapter 13, would combine into one beast, come together as one uh, beast. And the dragon... The Bible said, in which we studied last week, uh, that the dragon gave him uh, power. Uh, the devil, Satan, this dragon would give power uh, to this beast, these nations, these kings, and the throne. And the, Satan gave great authority. Satan directly gave the beast his power. And so the devil gave the world rulers uh, three things. And so everything is sectioned off into to, to numbers, numberization as far as, you know, like the horns and, and the animals. And, and now Satan begins to give power unto these beasts. Now all these beasts, all these nations will rise up. And I'm going to make reference to where we are in this day and age that we're living in. Notice that countries are lining up. Uh, we hear of countries making peace and lining up with Israel and uh, we hear of countries uh, that are beginning uh, to uh, line up in power uh, that are against America and against uh, maybe some other country. And, and you're going to find that each one of these kingdoms are going to rise and uh, they're going to come together. And so the dragon begins to give this power to these nations uh, that come together and he gives them great authority. And Satan directly gives the beast these three things. Number one... Uh, Satan will give power. And as we read 
uh, in chapter 13 in the book of Revelation, power uh, was given to perform miraculous powers and miracles. And he would begin to perform miracles, uh, which will lead to great deception because people see the healing and see the, the, the deliverance and see the miracles. And uh, even in today's time, uh, people today are, 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 are giving in to uh, places where people are hearing of miracles and wonders. And the Bible speaks uh, uh, to be careful and to watch out that the Satan is deceiving people. Uh, there are religions today and there are people today uh, that are not of uh, the truth today and they're away from the name of Jesus and, and they're performing miracles and powers. And so uh, we must be careful as saints of God uh, to be uh, he that hath an ear here. You need to hear what the word is saying tonight under the sound of my voice. You need to be, to be spiritual aware, spiritual alert of the things going on. People want to flop miracles. They hear of some place where somebody's performing miracles and healings and they may run there and boy, that's their religion and they don't even know anything about truth and they don't know a thing about baptism in His name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost and, and, and people don't even care about truth and they'll run and flop those places where there are miracles. But the Bible says in the end time that they would be deceived. There would be a power that Satan would use and there will be power that will be given. And so they'll, people will be deceived and run to that. So there's a power Satan's going to give them. Second thing is his throne. Uh, there is ruling authority. He's going to give them the throne. He's going to give them the ruling authority. He is king of the world during the tribulation. He, he is ruler of the world. When he was kicked out of heaven and he fell to the earth, he became the prince of the world. He is the ruler of the one in control uh, uh, of the world. And so here Satan is with the power to heal and uh, to do those miracles. And, and, and the second thing is he is given authority. And the third thing, it, it, it kind of extends that authority. There is even a greater authority. The third thing is there's even a greater authority, which refers to the extent of his rule. His authority extends beyond the ten nation confederacy. And so it goes beyond even the power of uh, uh, these nations and these kings and these rulers. So there Satan is given power to perform miracles and healings and wonders. Second, he's given ruling authority. Uh, and then third, the great authority, which he extends uh, to those uh, beyond the ten nation confederacy. And, then I, and I saw one of the heads as it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. The Bible's referring right here, one of the seven heads, the kingdoms received a mortal wound by a sword. The government failed. The government uh, began to fall. John is seeing the government, this power, this nation begin to fall. And Satan then will resurrect this kingdom and cause it to be a worldwide wonder. It makes you wonder and reference the things going on in our world. Could America fall flat on its face? And then the rise of some power of those uh, through the use of Satan. And don't, don't think for a moment there's not spirits in the land that what we're dealing with. This is not just about politics and the left and the right. This is spirits in the land uh, that Satan is using uh, to go... And, and, and he said, I saw uh, a kingdom fall by the sword, mortal wound. This is a representation of a government falling, a superpower, a nation. And so Satan begins to resurrect this kingdom. And it calls a worldwide wonder. People looking around saying, this is amazing. This must be uh, the God that we're looking for, talking about Satan. And this is the resurrection. This will be the beginning of the old Roman Empire. This will be the reviving uh, of the Roman Empire. And all the world, the Bible says, will be marveled and followed the beast. And Satan overcame the whole world by miraculous workings. And the phrase, all the world, indicates the deception will be worldwide. Everybody will see and be deceived because they'll... And you know, you think of the sickness in the land today with this COVID. You think of other illnesses and things that we're dealing with. People are tired of it. People are weary from it. People are frustrated. 
People want a vaccine. They want an answer. They just want a quick cure. And so you can see where the enemy, where Satan could step in and where the Spirit will, would come in and say, I, I've got what you're looking for and I can save the world. I can save you. And so you can see this becoming a worldwide wonder where everybody, oh, just take this and uh, and, and this mark and, 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 and it's going to be something that the world, everybody's got to have in order to function. And, and so... Anyway, it's, it's something that people are marveled over. And the world will be marveled and they will follow after this. They, they'll follow after a man and a government uh, that, that, that will promise to give them money and to support them. And they're going to follow after uh, a, a government that, oh, if you can just get me a vaccine or get me a, 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 a something that will help cure this. You can see with the world, they're so uh, uh, upset and in turmoil over this. And so the healing of the beast, mortal wound, it will cause people to begin when they see this wonder and they see that, oh, you've helped me. You've given us this, this that will cure us and you've, you've given us help and support. And it causes people, as John said, to worship Satan and the beast, this one world ruler. And so this is the way Satan gets people to worship and create a counterfeit religion. And their worship will extend to the point that they felt that no one could defeat him. He must be all powerful. He can perform miracles. Uh, he's brought nations together. He's come up with a cure for our diseases. And in their minds, they're going to look at this beast. They're going to look at Satan as being invincible. And so the two beasts that I'm talking and I'm preaching about on this evening, amen, are described as the Antichrist and the false prophet. These are the two beasts. And the second beast, the Bible says, arises from the land, which some interpret as the reference as this land that it arises in, or two as being Israel. That second beast also were implements of a worldwide identification, the mark of the beast. Whether it be this vaccine now, or it be one down the road, you can rest assured that in order to be able to take this, or to, to be able to receive goods and services and medical. You can see where this is leading, that, well, you got to take the mark. In order for you to, to be able, we've got to know that, that, that you've taken it, and it's a way that we can trace and keep everybody safe. It's all going to be deception uh, for the benefit. Oh, we're just looking out for everybody else. And, and so we as the church, we've got to be alert. We've got to be awake. We've got to be spiritually focused on this because Revelation chapter 13 is very relevant. With which is what is going on in our world even as I speak right now. Because what's taking place right now, and I, I, I'm not basing this off of Brother David, I'm basing this off of historians. I'm, I base it off of, uh, of people who have studied the Bible and even my own self looking to where this is going. Historians, and, and, and I, I was putting together something, a study that I was reading from people uh, that had got together and their study also is the Bible. And what we are seeing right now, the Bible predicts the rise of a global socialist state. And look at what our country is fighting tonight. Look at what we're, fi we're fighting for the very freedom that our forefathers uh, shed blood and tears for. The freedom we have to worship. The freedom we have uh, to do the things, to, to have a job, to make money, uh, to live and go as we please. Those freedoms... The Bible predicts that it will be a rise of a global socialist state. Brother David, what, what, what are you, where are you getting this from? Revelation 13 and 7 says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him all over, well, over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And verse 8 in Revelation 13 says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Revelation 13 and 9, If any man have an ear, let him hear. Church, individual, people listening, we're in the midst of a global rise of socialism. It's already been said. It's already been in place. Uh, this plainly is prophesied in the Scripture. That's what we're fighting Tonight, this is not a battle of the right and the left. This is not a battle of Republicans and Democrats. This is not a battle of one person versus the other. Church, this is a battle of spirits. 
That's what we're fighting tonight. That's what we're facing tonight. That is a spirit that's trying to remove our current uh, freedom that we have. And I'm not, I'm not going to get on here and politic, but let's all face it. We know there's one that's fighting for our freedom. And there's another that is pushing the agenda or the pencil to, to, to try to adopt and put together. There's already things in place upcoming in the future uh, of a new administration to push and back socialism. And so the, 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 this is not about equality. This is not about, oh, certain movements. Uh, this is not about ri all the rioting and all the things that they want to say uh, uh, in our world. Each one, they're, they're, each one is based on equality. I'm not getting fair rights and people mistreating and doing all this based on my color skin, my race, all this stuff. You know, all of that stuff, I'm telling you tonight, is a spirit behind it. And so the, the Build Back Better slogan is the campaign used uh, by uh, the people that are against uh, this freedom that we have and we're fighting for in America. And so there is a program that's out uh, for the next administration that they are fighting. The left is pushing this Build Back a Better slogan. And it was used by the World Economic Forum to describe their intention to build a global all these nations, these kingdoms coming together, want to create a socialistic state in the aftermath of COVID or any other disease that would occur. This was even the slogan, and I'm not trying to just get on here in politic, but the slogan uh, of Vice President uh, Biden, his slogan a few weeks ago came out and he made mention that I support the World Economic Forum. And it is also used, this is a spirit that is to build up a one world government. People don't like to hear that, but it's the truth is what it is. The World Economic Forum. And so it's being pushed, riots, uh, destruction of private property is all an attack upon Americans, their rights, their freedoms. But it is a false narrative of equality. Amen. The World Economic Forum is their push, their slogan. They like to hide behind it and say it's a coming together, a healing of nations. That's prophecy, church. Individual list, listening, this is prophecy, just fulfilling the one world government to put into play. They say basically, and, and I quote the World Economic Forum, their slogan, they quote, I quote, they say, you will own nothing and you will be happy about it. The spirit of socialism is lying and stealing. I'm telling you, church, we need to be awake and alive. There's lawlessness in our world. Satan, the Bible says, is seeking whom he may devour. He is out to kill and to destroy. Seeking whomever he can, he, he can devour. That means to destroy and get rid of. I'm telling you that, but just as sure as Satan has a master plan, God has an even greater plan. This movement is being referred to, and you can hear some of the terms on the news, uh, already fourth industrial revolution, or if you're not familiar with that term, how about the great reset? Let's just start America all over, come together as a one world government. The Bible predicts uses of technology that will be useful to impose the mark of the beast. If you look some of this stuff up today as far as big tech, technology, guess what comes up? Our social media, dominion, the voting, the, elect, elect, the way they use the voting machines. This stuff is all into place and it's just the next level that imposes and brings on the mark of the beast and brings in the power of the Antichrist and worship him. It's believed to be associated with even the medical field because it's all about an individual's health. Their well-being, big pharma, the rising need of, uh, of certain medicines. There's an even greater need to trace those who have the virus, tr criminals. Trace those who's been affected. But while we're in the process of tracing, let's put all of our information in a chip. Let's put a mark so that everybody can be safe and we can know where everybody's at. You don't have to worry about a credit card. You don't have to worry about all that. It's an easy tracking system. Church, we're in the last days. This is the prophetic word of God letting us know 
That this is the rise of the empire. This is the rise of the antichrist and the false prophet. I'm so thankful just as the devil has a, a, a master plan that, that Jesus has a master plan too. Amen. And, and so as it begins to grow and it begins to mature, the Bible calls this uh, the marriage, the prophecy, even in Israel has prophesied this as well as being the marriage of a coming together of Catholicism and socialism. The beast from the bottomless pit will come the Antichrist and the false prophet to gain control over the world and take advantage of those that are suffering. And so Revelation 17 and 3 says, So he carried me away in the spirit and to the wilderness, and I saw a woman set up on a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman here is symbolic to the Roman Catholic Church. The beast is the Antichrist and his kingdom. The color is red. And if you go back, if you know anything about history, it doesn't take uh, a rocket scientist to figure this out. But the official color of socialism and communism uh, is the color red. The word of God lets us know about the little horn. Amen. About the European nations coming together, dominating a one world government. We're truly in the last hour. But I tell you again, just as Satan has a plan, God has an even greater master plan. And I'm thankful that we have a plan where God, His Word, He's with us. He said He would never leave us, forsake us, but be with us even until the end of the world. But thank God He's even got a greater master plan. And that greater master plan is that He's got an escape, amen, route, and that is to go back. He's going to take the church to be with Him forevermore. Amen. I'm so thankful to be part of the church. Somebody said it's difficult times we're living in. It's hard to have church. It's hard to do this. Well, I'm thankful to be a part of the church, though. Whatever we can do, amen, whether it's by webcast, whether it's by radio, whether it's by internet, amen, whether it's coming to you on a Wednesday night, on this December uh, night, December the 9th, 2020, amen, on, in your home, it's great to be able to come to you, amen, with, with, with exciting news. And not that just that Jesus was born, which we're celebrating this Christmas season. But I'm telling you, you can be born again by the water and by the Spirit. Today is the day for salvation. Amen. Today is the day for salvation. Uh, you can be born again. You can be baptized in the only name by which we are to be saved. And that is the precious name of Jesus. And God wants to fill you with His Spirit there's a baptism of fire. That's the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. We're truly in the last hour. We need to return back to our fathers, our forefathers, the old past. The Bible says the good way. I want to read that scripture to you in closing. Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old past. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. I'm thankful for the old paths. I tell you, America, I'm praying that we can get back to the old ways. We need our freedom. We need our rights. We need our peace of mind. We need our, uh, we need our opportunity again to, to, to have revival. America needs revival. You need revival. Your families need revival. I need revival. We need a reviving of this precious spirit. We need in these last days uh, to have God. He that hath an ear, hear. Let's hear what God's word has to say. Let's pray together. God, thank you, Lord, for this Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again to come in the homes of many men and women, boys and girls. Thank you for our church. Thank you, God, for your blessings upon us and our families. God, I know that there's many people that are sick, many people that's hurting, many people that's dealing with various situations. God, there's loss of loved ones. People are going through all manner of things. But God, you're still in control. God, you said seek you first, the kingdom, your kingdom, and you would add all of other things uh, to us, God. I'm thankful for righteousness' sake, God. God, let us seek the things of you. Let us seek you in our hearts and our lives. God, I ask, Lord, that whoever has a need tonight who's listening, God, I ask, Lord, you would touch them, deliver them, strengthen them. God, I ask, Lord, you be with each and every one. 
God, teach us in these last days. Let us be alert. Let us be aware. Let us keep our eyes on the prize, God, that heavenly calling. I thank you for this, and I give you the praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God bless you. In Jesus' name.